<laughs> what is up guys Andy here just wanted to jump on real quick um, typically I'm doing zooms or I'm doing uh, like live updates on Instagram but tonight I'm filming this video so after last night's zoom it was amazing had a great great crew on there we covered a lot of topics got really um, you know into some conversations that wasn't part of trading or anything that we do like that but it really today I woke up with a ton of messages and I started going through them and reading them and responding back to people and then it, I just kind of stopped and started just writing my thoughts and stuff. And um, today was a crazy day. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, just busy, uh, which is a good thing. Um, I love getting Mondays knocked out of the way, hitting them, and then moving on to the, the next day and, and murdering the week. But um, as I'm sitting there working at Fit Plus today, I started thinking about, like, my grandfather, um, who's 88 years old. And, <clears throat> you know, he's had some tests done and stuff. And, you know, he's, he's not doing super good. Um, his body's in great shape um, as far as like his, his heart, his lungs, his kidneys, um, bladder, pancreas, everything's going great, but his mind's going. To the point that I can call him and say, hey, Papa, how's your day? Talk to him for a bit, get off the phone, and then he calls me right back. And he's like, hey, I saw where I missed your call, Andy. And you know, I'm like, oh yeah, Papa, I called you and, and you couldn't get a hold of it. He's like, oh, so what are you doing? And we start talking, you know, about, we just talked about his, his mind's going. And it started putting me in this place of, I'm going to be 39 years old this year, which is almost 40. He's 88. So I'm almost half of where he is. And it's like, you know, I see messages from people all the time on Instagram where they've messaged me a year ago. And they're like, Andy, I want to get involved with you. You know, I want to get involved with what you're doing. I want to trade with you. I want to have, you know, just this knowledge, you know, all this knowledge flowing around me to be doing what you and your team are doing. And I say the same thing, you know, the same message. I can look at the Instagram message and see the response that I gave them last year. And it says, hey, go to www.thepipconnect.com, select the basic package up there so I can add you to my group. I can add you to our weekly Zoom meetings and everything. And you're going to see exactly what we're doing. And then the responses are, well, Andy, I mean, I would like to sit down with you first just to discuss like how that's going to work. Like, what does it look like? How much time is it going to take? And and then I'm like, so what you want, what you're saying is you want to take up my time of my day to see if it's worth your time to pay for something that I'm giving you educational wise and information wise. That doesn't sound good to me. So it's like that. You've got to take that step forward. Like the, the best investment you can make of yourself, make for yourself is in yourself. And it's like, it's, you know, it, it's money well spent if you're wanting to get involved in what we're doing. And then, you know, time goes on, time goes on, then a year passes by and I get another message. Andy, I can't believe I've missed so much in a year. How do I get involved? I say the same thing. Click the link to join our group. That's what, every, that's what everyone else is doing. That's what, I mean, we got 780 people in one group and another group we got 150 people and then another group we got 80 people. You know, these people are taking the same, they're taking the necessary steps to get to that level they wanna be with the knowledge that we're supplying. You can do the same thing. Make sure we're recording. No, that'd be horrible if it wasn't. So then, you know, they, they got on another subject uh, with a few people of, you know, I just don't have the time, Andy. I, I don't have the time. I work 60 hours a week. Well, there's a lot more than 60 hours in a week. But, man, I got to sleep and I got to have time for, for myself and I got to have time for this. Well, I mean, I'm not a young guy anymore. I'm almost 40. While 40 is not old, it's still not like I was in my 20s. You know, if, if you're in your 20s and your time is completely maxed out, then hopefully that's time to get you to that next level. If you're maxed out in your 20s with time, and you're not getting to where you want to be, then I would really, really look back at the decisions you're making, the people you're hanging out with, the places you're going, and try to figure out where you want to get that you know, niche for yourself to where you can start growing, to where you can start really getting that in tune with your life where you want to be. So throughout the Instagram messages, I had things like, you know, Andy, I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to spend more time with my wife, um, but I just, I just don't know how to do that. Well, you, you have to take that risk if you want to get to the next step. You know, there are people who are willing to risk their health every single day, but they're not willing to risk their dollar bill for wealth. So think about that. I'm willing to risk my health every day, but I'm not willing to risk my own money for wealth. And when I say that, think about this. There are people who will go out every single day and they'll eat fast food, they'll eat junk food. Um, they will buy 
stuff off the streets to shoot into their body. Um, all kinds of, and Andy, I'm not doing heroin, I'm not doing anything like that. Well, even if you're not doing heroin, there's people that are in the gym right now that are buying stuff that's made in a dude's garage, uh, stuff they don't know where it's coming from so they can look good. Um, there's people that are doing things every single day that's wrecking their health, yet you can say, hey, you need to spend $150, $200, or $300 to invest in yourself, to learn something, to invest in education, to invest in a specific type of investment, whether it be online or something, and they're like, ooh, I don't know if I can do that, Andy. I, I don't know if I can invest that money right now. Things are a little tight. Well, but if you if your health is horrible and you wake up the next day and you're dead, uh, that money that you're setting on is not going to do anything. It, it's not going to do nothing for you. It, it's gone. So you you have no risk to worry about now because you're not even alive. And then you start thinking about the things that we do on a daily basis of where are we trying to put ourselves at? Are we doing the things that are taking us to that next level? Are we doing the things that are going to allow us to spend more time with our wife and kids. People just hold on to the dollar bill so much. They hold on to it so tight that they're not, they don't want to let it go. I know people that will, that will cheat on their spouses quicker than they'll let go of money to invest in themselves. Okay, so you know, if you rewind, you know, like we have these calls, and our crypto right now is up 500x for all of our calls, 500x. So that's $1,000 for every single one that we called and invested in. You've got a half million dollars. It went 500x. Like, that's just unreal. And again, Andy, how do I get involved? How do I get involved? Well, I mean, you can't get involved now on those. It's too late. So now you've got to get involved now for the next run of things that we have. How do you do that? You invest. You become part of our group. You become part of our team. You start learning. You study. You do these things, and it can get you to that level to where now you can spend more time with your wife and kids. You can do those things. But it doesn't happen overnight. I sit here, and I think about my grandfather, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm 50% there. I'm almost halfway to where my grandfather is right now. And when we put that in terms, it's like, well, man, 40, 49 years is a long time away, Andy. 49 years is a really long time, 50%. You know, when your battery is at 50%, people start freaking out and they're like, man, it's all downhill from now. You know, we're not charging up, we're charging down, we're 50%. Or you look at your gas tank and you're at 50%, you know, halfway, you're like, oh crap, I'm halfway. So, you know, here, I'm gonna be running out of gas in just a little bit, you know, that's where I'm at. And we're not even promised tomorrow. I could be running on reserve right now and not even know it. My tank could be on reserve and I don't even know it. My time could be so limited that in my mind I think I've got 40 years left. I can maybe only have 10. I can maybe only have five. So the risk that I associate with everything is my time and how much longer I have here to do the things that I want to do, to do the things with my kids, to do the things with my wife. You know, I, I get asked a lot, they're like, Andy, you know, you and Hannah, like, y'all just, it seems like you have everything together. And, uh, we do to some extent, but sometimes our life is a chaotic mess and we absolutely love it. But I try to take all of it in. I mean, I try to take so much of it in that I can tell you exactly what Hannah wore on specific dates we went to. You know, like when we had the Southside Social event where I had to go speak to the crowd of, of people there about cryptocurrencies and, and the foreign exchange market and all that. She wore a pair of black leggings with her black boots with white socks and a plaid maroon shirt and with a tank top underneath it. She had her hair pulled up with a pin to the side. I can remember that. Well, on my appreciation day at Whiskey Thief, she wore a white fuzzy dress with her black boots, had her hair curled and, and fixed on the edge. I remember that. How about the date night that we had where it was just me and her, and then we went to the Westin, and I can tell you what she wore then. She wore these green looking leggings that she has with a black top. She wore glasses that night. <clears throat> See, I soak all that stuff in because guess what? That could be my last night with my wife for dinner. Something could happen to her. Something could happen to me. I want to be soaking that type of stuff in. I want to be aware of what's happening. And, you know, I get asked the question a lot, Andy, when did your life take that change? When did you realize that you had to make a change? And it was the night that I was laying in bed. I'll never forget. It was a Christmas Eve night. And I'm half asleep. It's around 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Technically, I was asleep. But I was still kind of, you know, it's Christmas Day. So you're sitting there thinking, man, I'm about to wake up, open the gifts with the kids. My phone rings. I'm like, who, who the world is calling me this time of night? So I look at it and I was like, oh man, this isn't gonna be good. So I pick it up. As soon as I answer the phone, the lady on the other, side, other end said, Andy, um, I hate to be calling you right now, but I wanna let you know that Lainey is dead. Hold up. Lainey's dead? Like that, that's my daughter's name. And I was still kind of half asleep, half, half there. And, it hit me that it was a girl that had been battling cancer, cancer that I'd been following for quite some time. <clears throat> me and some friends were going to go to the hospital and we were going to visit her. Uh, I'd been working with a couple of celebrities that she wanted to meet, that she'd watch their TV shows, and we were all going to go there and surprise her. 
and she she died on Christmas Day. But hearing that, Annie, Lanny's dead, it hit me in such a way that hurt so bad that it took me almost two days to be able to go back to sleep at night because I was just I just had that in my head. Every time I lay down, I'd, Lanny's dead, and I would get up and I'd go hug Lanny and I would hold her tight. And I was like, man, I could lose my daughter any day. So then fast forward two weeks later, I'm at Starbucks downtown at the Reed House. So got my buddy in, He's he lives in Charlotte. He come in, he's traveling all over the place. He's on his way to Houston, but wants to stop in Chattanooga to hang out for a bit. <clears throat> we're sitting there drinking coffee. And we're having a good time, laughing, cutting up. He's like, man, I'm gonna go get a, a refill real quick. I'm like, bro, you're at Starbucks. I'm not gonna give you a refill. You just gotta buy a new coffee. I was like, this isn't like the, you know, some of the places you got back home where it's a mom and pop shop and you know people. <clears throat> and he laughed, he's like, bro, I completely forgot about that. So he's walking up front. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get another cup of tea. So I walk up front with him and then his phone rings. He picks it up. And I've never seen a grown man hit the ground so hard. Like he hit the ground. He's crying. He can barely catch his breath. And I'm like, bro, what's wrong? What's wrong? I got my arm around. I'm like, bro, come on. Hey, talk to me. I'm like grabbing his shoulders. I'm shaking him. Bro, talk to me. What's going on? He looks up. Tears just run out of his face. Sit. And I just lost my wife. I just lost my wife. She was in a car wreck, bro. She's in a car wreck. I got to get home. I got to get home. I get home. There's something I can do. There's something I can do. That happened two weeks apart of what happened with Delaney and then what happened to his wife. And it was at that moment I realized at any given moment, I could lose my wife, I could lose my kids, or something could happen to me. So why in the world am I worried about risk of money? Something that I can go get another job for. Me and Hannah could lose everything. We've been there before, okay? We've been there. We've been at that spot where we had nothing had to start from scratch again. We could lose everything that we have. We could wake up tomorrow and lose our business. We could lose our, our house and the cabin with our car. We could lose everything. And you know what would happen? We're still alive. We still have each other. We still have our family. It's going to suck, but guess what? We can pick up. There's jobs out there that are hiring that we can get a job to work. We may have to work two jobs each. We may have to put the kids in the, after, you know, like a, a program or something to, to, to appease them at a daycare. And we may have to let them stay with the parents and do something like that, but guess what? We would find a way to make it work because money's out there for everyone to get as long as you're willing to get it, okay? But your life isn't. You can't get more life. You can't get more time back. But that's not what we're worried about. We're worried about a dollar bill. We're worried about a hundred dollar bill. Like I can't invest 500 bucks because I may not get it back. Man, the people that send me those messages about I can't invest 500 bucks right now. I can't invest a thousand dollars because you know I'm strapped right now. Man, I'm, those are the same people I also watch that just bought new shoes, bought new purses for their girlfriends. Or it's someone getting their hair and nails done constantly. Or it's someone that's buying the newest of the clothes. Or they're modding their car. Or they just bought the newest of the phones. Or they did all this stuff, but they don't have money to do that. Or it's the ones that are out buying bottle service and tables and booths and living this flex culture life, but they don't have the money to invest. It's not that they don't have the money to invest. It's that it's not a priority of theirs. But they still want that. They still want that dream. But they know that if they go to chase that dream, they've got to cut back on something else over here. And that's where flex culture is killing us. It's killing us. If you don't have the newest of this, if you're not rocking, you know, the Gnosis of clothes, if you're not, if you don't have the newest iPhone, if you don't have all this stuff, well, then you're just not doing good. Who cares what anyone else thinks that you're doing? Seriously, who cares? Because like right now, I'm at home. I've got my three kids upstairs. Hannah's in there watching a TV show. I'm in the bedroom. This is our life. It doesn't matter what I wear. It doesn't matter what I drive. I mean, I've, I've got an R8. It's a Gen 1 R8. It's used. My daily driver is a 2002 Lexus IS300. My most favorite car that I own is a 1989 S10 Blazer. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Because you know what I've got? I've got something that a lot of people don't have. And that's the ability to spend my time with my family how I want to. That's the ability to say if me and Hannah, as you guys saw last year, we took a road trip all across America to the Scottsdale, Arizona and hung out there. And then we went to our friend's farm and hung out there for two or three weeks. And then we went to Charlotte and then we left there and we were back and forth in Atlanta and Nashville and all over the place. I would rather have that freedom every day than to know I've got a really big house, a really nice car, and I can't enjoy any of it because I'm tied to working at that stuff. I can't even go out on a date with my wife because I'm too tired or she's tired because we've been working all day. 
I can't go play with the kids. Well, because I'm still at work. Like, that doesn't sound fun. Me and Hannah get to go on date nights two or three times a week. We go out on date nights more now than we did when we were actually dating. I mean, that's the things I hold dear for me. That's the things that I would assume that the people that reach out to me want to experience. So how do we get there? Let me get something to drink. Liquid death for the win. Mm. Do you know how many people want their dream house and dream car? And they've been wanting it for 20 years and it's never happened. Never. That sucks. It's horrible. It's the worst feeling in the world to want something, that, want something that long and never be able to get it. But you know what's even worse than that? Someone that has it. Someone that has their dream car and has their dream house and can't even enjoy it. Because they're spent working. They're spent working for those things to look good because it's their dream. It's like, well, I've got my dream car and I have my dream house. When was the last time you had friends over to it? Man, it's about, I mean, I, I work all the time. I'm pretty tired. Now, I'm not saying that that's the majority. Me and Hannah have friends that have all of it. We have friends who own businesses, who get to travel and do amazing things, who have nice cars, nice houses, and they have an amazing life. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. This is the message to the people that I get on Instagram, that come in to Fit Plus, that message me directly, that want these things and they can't get them, they feel like they can't get them, or they've got these things and they feel like they're stuck. They're not even living their life because it's work to pay for this, work to pay for this. I, I would love to be a stay-at-home mom, Andy, but I can't because we just bought a new house and we have two new cars and my husband bought a new boat. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I can't do it. Well, did you hear what you just said? You just said that your house, your two new cars and your boat is more important than spending time with your kids, watching them grow up. You said that, I didn't say that, you did. We have to step back sometimes and take a look at our own life to see, are we really living the way we wanna live? And then that comes to that conversation where they're like, well, Andy, some people are just born with just opportunity. Some people are just born with, you know, things in their life and everything's perfect. You know what there are? There are people who are born into wealth, who are born into amazing families where this stuff's already taken place and it just happens. There are. But then there's also people that are born without legs that find a way to get through life and do things more than people that have them. There are people that don't have hands that are more successful in their life than people that do have hands. You ask, well, why aren't you moving towards the goals you wanna to move to? Well, Andy, it's fear. It's fear. I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of losing. We, we were already born losing. If you don't apply yourself and you don't do anything to step out into something different, you're losing. I mean, th think about this. Kobe Bryant wasn't born a winner. Everyone's like, oh, Kobe was born to be the best. He was If Kobe would have never picked up a basketball and went to shoot, he would have never been where he was during his whole career. He had to take the step to get the basketball, to go out and practice, to show up early before everyone else got there, to be the one to leave practice last. He had to apply that. Same goes with any sport you look at. You look at Tom Brady, Drew Brees, you look at any of these people. They had to apply it. Had they never picked up a football, they wouldn't be where they're at today. So yes, fear is there for everyone. But if you're afraid of failing and you're afraid of losing money that you invest and you're afraid of paying for something to educate yourself and you're always afraid, 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 are you not afraid of dying and not living your life? Are you not afraid of going to bed one night and then not waking up the next day and everyone's saying, man, he had big dreams. He just, I guess the world just never worked out for him. The world's not going to work out for you. Uh, a prime example, I was at Fit Plus and this girl came in and I heard her singing. And that's one thing I love about Fit Plus. The acoustics are great. And she's sitting over there eating her food and she's kind of like, you know, low tone singing. I was like, yo, your voice is legit. Have, have you ever thought about like sending out a sample, like CD or anything to someone or, or doing a performance or singing? She's like, oh, I do. I do little things here and there. I'm just waiting for, you know, that opportunity to knock. I was like, well, what opportunity is that? Like, where you play at? She's like, oh, I play at family and friends houses. I mean, a producer agent is going to show up there one day and pick you up. She's like, well, you know, I'm hoping that someone will see something on social media, then knock on my door and, and just sign me. It, uh, I mean, that can work, but like, if you don't put it out there, people aren't going to know. No one's just going to knock on your door one day and say, hey, yo, we want to sign you. You're the next big thing. That has happened before. 
But you're, everything, when people say, oh, that's happened before, it's a very small percentage. There's people that win the lottery every year. But look at your chances of winning the lottery. The same goes, you have to apply yourself. You have to put it out there if you want something back. One of my good friends, Darren Johnson, told me, he said, anytime I talk to anyone about Andy Peters, I tell him, Andy is the person that will step to the plate 30 times to strike out 28 to hit a home run twice. Because he knows when he hits those home runs, it's going to be big home runs. And that's the truth. I, I'm that way. I am not afraid of failing 10 times if I know I can succeed one. I'm not afraid of failing 100 times if I know two are going to be something big. That's how I was with cryptocurrency. That's how I was with currencies. That's how I've been with stocks, everything. Because it's like I can buy 50 of these, but if two are really big bangers, it's going to make up for all of it. So, like I said, there was no like set agenda with this or anything. I just want people to get up and work and live their dreams. There is nothing worse than watching people not live their dreams. There's nothing worse than watching people who are not applying themselves. There's nothing worse than seeing friends who aren't truly happy. Like, they're happy, but then you get talked to them and they're like, man, I'm just, my job's just not giving me the opportunity I want. Is this your job's place to give you opportunity? They're giving you a paycheck for your time. You're exchanging your time for money. They're giving that to you. Is it their job to give you your dream? It's not. It's your job to get it. That was something I had to realize when I worked at Unum. When I was at Unum, I was there for almost 15 years. And for a long time, I was like, you know what? Someone's going to you know, see maybe how fast of a, a worker I am, how quick I can get things done, or maybe some of my attention to detail. And if they do then I can advance. And then after not advancing and not advancing and not advancing where I wanted to go, my work did become a little lazy. I wasn't looking forward to going to work. And I would talk to my dad, my life coach, and I'm like, man, I just, I feel like work's not giving me the opportunity I want. And my dad was like, son, why? What do you expect your work to give you? They gave you a job. They're paying you for your time. It's your responsibility to go out and attack the world and find your opportunity. They're not gonna hand it to you. I started thinking about it, I was like, but dad, I know people that have come in and worked and they've been promoted and they've done this and they've done that. And I mean, they worked for it, but like they just did their job and did like 10 to 15% more and it was noticed. Well, yes, yeah, son, you're right. But what about if where you're at in your job doesn't care about that. What about if they don't want to notice you? Their focus may be on someone else. If you want to live your dream, you have to determine what you want to do. As long as you're putting it on someone else, there'll always be an excuse. There'll always be a reason. And you'll always put that blame on them instead of looking in the mirror saying, I'm not living my dream today because of me. I'm not living the dream I want today because of something I've done. So I always say, how many people are miserable with the life they've created. Think about that. Say it out loud with me. How many people are miserable with the life they've created? I know people right now who are miserable with their job, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, and they've created that environment. They've created it. If you are doing something that you have not looked forward to doing for one year, and you continue doing that, it's all on you. It's no one else's excuse at that point. Well, Andy, well, I mean, I've got a family. I've got a wife. I've got a kids. I, I mean, I've got a kid or kids, whatever. What, what am I supposed to do? Just up and quit? No, you come with a plan. When I quit my job, I didn't just quit with no plan. I had planned for six years of if I decide to leave this company, what am I going to do? How much money do I need? How much do I need to put back? And that's where I started building these little companies and finding ways to make $100 here, $1,000 here, $10,000 here, $200 here. When you do that for five, six, seven years, it starts stacking up, but you have to plan for it. See, we live in a society where everything's instant gratification. We want it now. We want it now, now, now. We want to order Amazon Prime to be here the next day. I see it all the time at Fit Plus. People on the phone, they're like, you mean to tell me if I order this right now, I can't get it until three days? I remember back in the day when if you had something leave the warehouse within 14 days you were lucky 
but everything's instant now. We want the fastest internet. We want pictures to be uploaded now. We want someone to answer the phone now when we call. We want someone to text us back immediately. Everything is instant. And because of this, of that type of culture that we're in, it's caused us to think that our dreams have to be instant. Like, for example, I've recommended baby pips to a thousand plus people probably. But no, actually more than that because we had one one Zoom not long ago. Yeah, we're more than a thousand people I've witnessed. I mean, I've paid, told them to take baby pips on. And you know what I get? And I just don't have the time to sit down and, and study this stuff. It, it'll take me three months. And? What, what's three months to learn something? What, what, is, what is three years to learn something that can change your life, that can give you your dream? Some people that are coming to me already have been living 15 years of their life not happy. So if it took half that time to get to where your dream is, you're succeeding. I mean, it goes with everything. It's just like with weight loss and Fit Plus, when people come in for weight loss and they're like, how long do you think it'll take me to lose 50 pounds? I'm like, well, if we're doing it the healthy way, I mean, you could probably get away with a year. I mean, that's, you know, five, six pounds a month. Um, it may take a little longer, but I mean, we could find a way to... So, I mean, you, you mean I, you don't think it's feasible in a month? Well, how long did it take you to put it on? Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's just besides the point. No, it's not. It has everything to do with it. Where we're at in our life, there's been a pattern to where we're at and why we're here. You have to break that pattern, and it could take just as long to get to that next level. So any of this, I just want to say, chase your dreams, chase your passion. Um, you know, there was really no set agenda to this, and it could be all over the place. I really don't care. It was, uh, I just want to say what was on my mind, what I felt. Uh, I just had so many messages today come in, and it was like, I'm going to make this video, throw it on YouTube. If people like it, they like it. If they watch it, they watch it. You know, it is what it is. Um, it just it hit a little different when I started thinking about, you know, I said my grandfather, because this was a really strong man that, you know, even in his 60s and early 70s, I mean, wide open, you know, just really strong. Had, I mean, I'm talking massive biceps and everything. And then I'm watching him age right before me. And it's like, I'm 50% there. I'm 50% there in just a couple more years. That's a, that's a half tank, man. That's a battery on half. And here's the thing. We don't even know if that's the case. Like I said, I could I could be on E right now and not even know it. You know, my light could be flashing. Yours could be flashing. We think that we have all this time for everything. It's like we have time to, to spend more time with our kids later. We have more time to spend time with our wife later. We have more time to for ourselves later. We really don't. It's one of the fastest moving things we could ever have. And when you start putting time to everything that you do, for a person that makes 10 bucks an hour. They've got to work two weeks to afford this phone. They've got to give up two weeks of their time to buy that phone. Now, it would be ridiculous. I mean, my company pays for my phone. I don't pay for it, my company does. But still, you have to think about things like that. Think about everything with your time. And then think about your relationships. Are they where you want it to be? Are you putting in the work for that stuff? When, when people come into to Fit Plus, they see me out with the kids, you know, grabbing coffee somewhere or whatever. They're like, man, you always just, you always are just seem like you're, you're on top of it, that you're smiling, you're having a good time and, and just loving every minute of it. And I went, I don't have a choice not to because this is my life. Like these kids are my life. My wife is my life. And everything has to be going together. For me to be a successful trader, for me to be a successful business owner, for me to be just a successful person in general, my house has to be right. I have to be right with my kids. I have to be right with my wife. I have to make sure that everything is aligning perfect because when you've got that many moving pieces, if one thing's off, it'll throw off everything. It'll throw off all the movement. If, if you and your wife are in a bad spot, and you're still trying to get the nice car and the nice house, or you're trying to be successful, focus on your relationship first. Focus on your marriage, focus on your kids. Get that fixed and everything else will start clicking. Everything else will seem that much easier. Because when you've got that little thing in the back of your head saying, I don't think me and my wife are right. I don't think me and my husband are doing well right now. You're gonna be all over the place. You're not going to be where you wanna be. 
So I challenge every single person, if you've watched this video this far, I challenge you. Get out a piece of paper, get out a pen, write down everything that's going on in your life and make sure that you're taking the right steps to get to the next level. Make sure that everything is aligning where you want it to align because you get one run at this. One. I mean, think about that. We, we know we have a lot of time to some extent. It's not a lot of time, but just imagine. You are on the drag strip and you're about to take off and you've only got one pass to get it right. And if you don't, that's it. That's how this life is. We don't get a, a redo. I have held a friend's hand while he was dying in the hospital. I have watched my family members take their last breath. And it's not to where you get to that last point. You go, oh, oh stop, hold up, hold up. Uh, give me five more days. Five more days and then I'll go. You're gone. And that's it. So if you're worried about losing money, if you're worried about risk that you're taking, if you're worried about all these little things in life, just remember the one thing you should be worried about is how much time you have left and where you're wasting that time. So I hope everyone has an amazing week. I hope everyone has an amazing day. If you have any questions or you want to connect with me, you can hit me up on Instagram. It's underscore Andy Peters underscore. You can hit me up on Facebook at fb.com forward slash Andy Peters V. You can drop a comment here. I'll respond to it. You can hit me up on Telegram. Telegram is at Andy Peters. And you can find my website at www.thepipconnect.com. I want to help you. I want to help you get to where you want to be, whether that's within trading, whether that is maybe just in mentorship through life. Maybe it's just in, man, I just want to pick your brain. Let's make it happen. Let's get you going. I don't want to see anyone standing still. Rob Bailey said it best. I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I know not to give up, to keep trying, and I do not stand still. That's what will make you successful. Hope everyone has a great night. We'll see you next time.